Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the Planes, Trains, and Comic Books channel. My name's Matt, and today we're going to review the one-shot God of Tremors. And before we get into that, if you guys wouldn't mind like, sharing, subscribing, all that good stuff, it really helps me out, and it lets me know what you guys want to see more of. So with that being said, let's get straight into it. All right, so we see here we got the cover, uh, God of Tremors. It is an Aftershock comic, uh, and it's a one-shot. So this is a 46-page uh, horror one-shot, uh, and it's by Peter Milligan, who, you know, classic comic book creator from the you know late 80s, 90s, wrote a lot of uh, horror comics like Hellblazer, uh, stuff like that. And, uh, and then the artist by Piotr Kowalski. This book, I got to say, was pretty awesome. Uh, it's in an oversized format. So this book is actually, if you pick it up, uh, in the physical is about the size of a magazine, um, or like the, uh, the black label DC books. It's, it's around that size. Really cool that they're doing this larger format, um, books. It is, uh, I believe it's six ninety nine. Uh, but I felt like this story was well worth six ninety nine. The art, everything about it was really good. So we start off here on the first page at, uh, Clark Hall and there is Reverend Ingram, or Ingham Clark, or Reverend Clark, I'm going to call him, and he is beating the fuck out of his son. <laughs> he's kind of performing an exorcism, exorcism, but it's not. Uh, he is a reverend, and he's you know making his son say, you know, I am defiled, and you know uh, we can see the boy is uh, as he's saying I am defiled, he's stuttering. And the premise of this book is that it's set in uh, early 1900s England. And there's just not enough about science, about epilepsy, you know, on this. So uh, this kid has epilepsy and they think it's the devil. And so uh, his dad is like making him kind of do this every night where he's like beating him and then making him confess to whatever demons he has. And then we see what happened is three weeks earlier, his son, who's named Aubrey Clark, uh, you know, goes to a boys' school or whatnot, where he's actually like uh, sleeps there and everything. And uh, they say the reason why he thinks he gets this is because he, uh, I guess, finds out about masturbation while he's uh, here. So he's like, uh, does that, and I think he realizes, oh, that's a sin, and he feels bad about it. And that's why he believes at first that that's why he gets these epileptic seizures. We actually get to see his first seizure happen in, in the class where the convulsions happen. And I like the way they, they draw this so creepy. Like his eyes, you know, kind of turn white and his body's in contortions. But everybody else's is like a weird, creepy specter, like haunting him as they're standing over him. When the dad talks to the professor, I guess, about this, they're like, I heard it was caused by, you know, masturbation or beastliness, they, they call it. So uh, that's basically what they're their theory is, is that the kid's been masturbating and that's what's causing this. So because of that, they, uh, they make him like throw up. They give him like, uh, they call him em emetics, but I think that's supposed to be like, uh, I don't know, something that purges him. So he's got to throw up every night and also use the restroom every night because of what they give him. They do the exorcism also, and then they tie his hands so he can't touch himself. And then, you know, his dad also like, whips him and stuff so really horrible abuse on this child through all of this you know we see his mom actually like does uh notice like hey this is abuse and you know what if we saw a doctor and the the dad is very anti-doctor he's very much a um you know only god can he heal this kind of thing it's obviously demons and doctors don't know anything in fact they're like that science is of the devil they even have like the darwin book origin of species just came out around this time and they're like preaching against it his dad is the preacher preaching against it uh at the pulpit like every sunday we also see that his dad uh is definitely dealing with the same demons that he's treating his son for because his dad has all these uh i guess dirty books or whatever that he's like has to look at and then beat himself with because he's like get behind me, Satan. <laughs> These demons are tempting me or whatever. And so he actually whips himself. He's definitely a crazy religious person in this book. So then one day the son goes to walk out, uh, you know, in the woods and whatnot. And he's not really allowed by himself because they don't want him to go masturbate or whatever, I guess. So there is a groundskeeper who's supposed to keep watch over him, but he lets him kind of uh, walk out for a little bit and then he's like hey you know stay here and the kid just kind of runs away and eventually he runs into this forest and we f he finds like this 
statue that's that's like he hears it talking to him it's like you know worship me give me your ecstasy of trembling you are no longer your father's you are mine and he's like freaked out about this <laughs> because you know he's like super christian and everything and uh He's like, oh my god! Like, so there's some weird god in the in the woods that's tempting me. So he starts having dreams and whatnot as well about like the forest and like the this god in the forest. Basically, this guy is like, I am your god, Aubrey. I am the god of tremors, the god of frenzy, and you are mine. And he even starts having visions of this in like church, uh, where like it's around the cross and all these like naked tree women are dancing around and stuff. So he starts having seizures whenever he sees these images. So the mom has been slowly trying to talk to the dad and say, like, look, you know, I think we should go to the doctor, like to read this pamphlet on epilepsy. It's basically exactly what our son is going through. And this dad is like, do not tell me to read woman. Like you're just a woman as a woman. You are patently unable to understand these things. So uh, she's like, it's a disease. And he's like, no. And so he actually like hits his wife about it and starts like beating her over these issues. So this actually gets so bad with the abuse that he he almost uh, strangles his wife in like an anger rage uh, because she's trying to treat some of the other symptoms that start happening to him. Like he starts getting sores on his body and stuff as well. I don't know if that's because his dad is maybe beating him, but it definitely isn't helping. So in like a last effort, the boy, you know, after his dad won't listen to them. He goes to this God and he's like, you know, I've been praying to my father's God. He hasn't done anything. So I ask you, God of Trevor's, uh, you claim to be more ancient than the Christian God. Perhaps you are also more powerful. Can you help me? And when the God doesn't answer back, he actually tries to kill himself with his dad's razor. So finally, the mom sneaks Aubrey out of the house. Um, I guess the dad is away for some reason. And. She's like, I'm going to take you to this doctor. I've told him not to, like, tell the dad. Because I guess at this time, you know, like, women had to get the permission of their husbands to go to doctors or something. And so as she's talking to the doctor, he's like, well, you know, I I had to tell your husband. And then the the husband walks in and is basically like, how dare you go against me, you disobedient wife. So he beats the shit out of the boy that night. And then he has people from the asylum come and take the mother. So, uh, yeah, he has her taken away to an asylum for disobedience, I guess. You can just take someone's freedom away back then. Um, and the doctor is very much that, that she was going to. The doctor is like, it's true. You're unwell. You disobeyed your husband. No, no healthy woman would disobey their husband. So he starts going to the, sta- the, the statue every night and praying to it every night. Please, I beseech you. You know, God of Tremors, help me, like, basically kill my dad or take care of everything that's happening right now. But unfortunately, the groundskeeper actually sees him praying to this idol and tells the dad, and the dad even gets more crazy about beating him. So in the dad's frenzy, he goes out to the where the statue is, and he starts hitting it with a sledgehammer. And amazingly as he hits it it's not breaking really but then all of a sudden it starts chips off and he wasn't wearing his safety glasses because they didn't have those back then so (laughs) it chips off and the little pieces go into his eyes and just shred his eyes so make make him go blind and he becomes instantly lost in this forest he doesn't know where he is in relation to anything and i'm gonna leave it there i'm not gonna spoil the ending of this book but this book was fantastic I really liked the pacing of it. I liked the entire story. I mean, Peter Milligan is someone who I've mostly liked everything he's written. Even if it's something that's not my favorite, it's like, okay, I see what he was doing, and maybe it didn't execute for me personally. But I always think he has good ideas. So this was a, 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 an automatic, I, you have to pick it up you know, for me. And so uh, this format of the 46-page story one shot that's like a horror kind of one shot was great uh it really fleshed out well and it moved perfectly i mean it was just a really nice quick read but also felt like you got a really good solid fat story in there so and i would say the only thing about it is it's not really it's not so much like horrific you know throughout the whole thing the horror kind of happens more towards the end 
as far as like bloody gore stuff or whatnot. And then it also happens just uh, for me, the, the more horrific thing is the way that the dad and society kind of treats the mom and the son in this. <laughs> like the idea that, you know, it's all demons and he's allowed to beat his kid every night and, and, and try to get these demons out himself is a uh, is you know almost unbelievable but i know it actually happened i'm going to give this book a five out of five i think that's my first five out of five uh go pick this up it is a great read you're getting a 46 page oversized story uh for 6.99 and you know it's an indie press so you know i gotta support the indie guys this is horror as well so i try to support the horror books so this is right down my alley uh, and it's Peter Milligan. So, I mean, he did a great job with this. This this book specifically had really good pacing, and I liked it a lot. Like I said, five out of five doesn't come very often for me. So with that being said, we will see you guys on the next one.